Hi, you guys. Welcome back for our daily practice questions. As always, you know I like to first get into my introduction and disclaimer before getting started with our questions for today. So for those of you who are familiar with me, hey, y'all. For those of you who are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Dr. Brittany Weinstock. I am a family nurse practitioner, and I am the founder and CEO of The Nursing Studio. I provide resources, tools, review courses, review videos, review books, one-on-one -on -one sessions, QBanks, and more to assist nurses as well as nurse practitioners with success on their boards as well as in practice. I've been doing this since 2015, assisting nurses and nurse practitioners internationally with exam success. Now, I always like to go over my disclaimer and reminder that we know there's no absolutes in medicine. We treat on a patient-by-patient -patient basis, so any of the questions that you see here I have designed and created based on the current guidelines being tested on the ANCC as well as AAMP exam. Now, any of my videos where I'm teaching on things that we currently do in practice, I will always say that so there's no confusion. So with that being said, let's get into question number one for today. The nurse practitioner is planning to prescribe prophylactic therapy for pneumocystis pneumoniae for a patient with HIV. What is the best prophylactic option? Is it A, Keflex, B, Bactrim, C, Flagyl, or D, Ciprofloxacin? Take a moment and tell me what you got in the comments, you guys. Now, y'all know I always recommend reading the stem of the question first as it allows you to slow down to ensure you're answering what is even being asked. So here, the stem of the question states, what is the best prophylactic option, right? So still, when they're saying prophylactic, we know we're looking for a treatment option. So you know me, I always tell you, if they're looking for a treatment, you need to look and see if they provided you with a diagnosis and in the event they have not, you need to take it a step further to look for assessment findings. But also key when they're looking for treatments, if they're saying acute, if they're saying abortive therapy, if they're saying prophylactic therapy, you need to pay attention to all of these things. This is going to also help you to consider what type of treatment you should be utilizing because you don't want to uh, pick out an acute therapy for something that we're looking for prophylactically, right? So here they are telling us that we're looking for the prophylactic treatment for PCP, pneumocystis pneumoniae. You might also see it as like um, PJP uh, because this is a, a extreme, can be fatal lung um, infection that occurs, that can occur, I should say. So we want to, because you know HIV patients are immunocompromised, so we want to give them prophylactic treatment to prevent them from potentially having this near fatal um, lung infection, right? So that first line therapy that we like to go with on this is B, Bactrim. Okay, Bactrim. All right. Y'all, and I pause for a second because I was going to go down the rabbit hole because there are other options. When I'm doing one-on-one -on -one sessions, I know that we go through this, but I don't want to confuse you on um, this video. We'll get into that. Um, we're almost through with the antibiotics, and I'm going to just start doing uh, study series again, studying along with you guys, because I've seen and heard a lot of your requests and questions, and I feel like some of this stuff I just need to do little pockets of videos um, to update you guys on these areas. So there are other prophylactic options, but the top of that and the one and the go-to is always Bactrim. So unless there's something that tells you that it needs to be eliminated, go with Bactrim, okay? All right, question number two. A patient presents to the office with complaints of recent noted vaginal odor. She denies any noted discharge. Clue cells are noted on wet prep. Based on these findings, how should the nurse practitioner treat? Is it A, doxycycline? Is it B, Bactrim? Is it C, Flagyl? Or is it D, Rosepin? Take a moment and tell me what you got, you guys. All right, so stem of the question here states, based on these findings, how should the nurse practitioner treat? Y'all know what to do? You want to run it back and look and see if there is any diagnosis already provided to us. And it is not, so we need to run it back a step further and look at the assessment findings. Now, y'all know, I tell you, as we're working through our assessment findings, I want you to go through a checklist. Look and see if they provided you with an age. Look and see if they provided you with a gender. Look and see if they provided you with an S with ethnicities. Because all of these things can help build on how we may need to treat or different things that we need to consider in our treatment or other routes that we may need to take. Um, so if those are included, make sure you're paying attention to those. Um, so here, patient presents, female patient. Um, has recent noted vaginal odor. So we're starting to think of things that can cause um, odor, right? 
uh, we're typically thinking of uh, bacterial vaginosis can have a fishy odor. That's a classic presentation. You can start to think of U UTIs because you're, you know, you having these differentials because they may potentially be talking about malodorous urine, you know, so you're keeping these things in your mind. And then it says she um, denies any noted discharge. Okay, so we're still keeping the same differentials. Um, clue cells were noted on wet prep. Bam, that's your confirmation of bacterial vaginosis, right? So then you need to think about how do we treat bacterial vaginosis? So first line therapy is flagell, right? So C is your best answer. All right. And then lastly, question number three. A patient presents to the office with complaints of a yellowish vaginal discharge. Upon examination, the nurse practitioner notes a strawberry cervix with confirmed discharge that is yellow in color. Based on these findings, how should the nurse practitioner treat? Is it A, Augmentin, B, Rocephin, C, Flagyl, or D, Bactrim? Take a moment and tell me what you got. All right, so based on these findings, how should the nurse practitioner treat? Again, we're looking for the um, diagnosis to see if it has been provided, and it has not, so we need to look at the assessment findings. Um, this patient comes into the office, they're complaining of a yellowish vaginal discharge. So of course you'll have to do further assessment on this. Um, on exam, the nurse practitioner notes the strawberry cervix and confirms the um, yellow discharge. Okay, so these are a classic presentation. You know, you know, I tell you, when we have those classic key identifiers, you know, my Britney Spring say, when I say this, you say that, right? So when I say strawberry cervix, you should say trichomonas especially when they say yellow discharge associated with it, right? So when I say strawberry cervix, you say trick, right? Trichomonas. And then first line therapy for the treatment of trichomonas is also flagell. So C, flagell, okay? So I always say for you guys, for bacterial vaginosis and trick, we know their first line therapies are flagell. And I always say think fishy and flagell, F and F. So bacterial vaginosis key identifier is that fishy odor. So we're going to treat it with flagell. But also, um, trichomonas, although it's classic presentation is strawberry cervix, also um, on the mount, they, they say in the appearance, it's classic that it looks like fish swimming. It can look like that under the, um, the microscope. So I always think of the fish and flagell, okay? But again, BV and trick, first line therapy is flagell. All right, you guys. I hope you found this helpful. As always, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share with whomever you may think may find this beneficial as well. But y'all know what to do. Y'all make sure to meet me back here. Y'all make sure y'all are subscribed. I have some up and coming things um, that are going to be uh, very helpful to you guys um, just to try to help on things that I noticed that you guys have been asking about or common themes that I see that you are having difficulty with or common things that I am noticing with my one-on-one -on -one sessions. So um, uh, trying to find some quick and easy ways for you guys to get the nitty gritty things that you need to know um, to make it a little bit more understandable because I'm seeing the same uh, struggles from you guys. So uh, make sure you're getting these notifications because we will be doing some fun things to help you and there will be some uh, other exciting news coming. All right, you guys, and you um, know what to do, y'all. Make sure y'all meet me back here. If you need any, any other resources that I do offer, feel free to reach out to the nursing studio by giving us a call at 803-400-6864. You can also shoot a text message to this number or shoot us an email to the nursing studio, the number one at gmail.com. The things that I do offer are my review book. You can get it in an ebook or paperback option. They're both linked in the bio of this channel. If you prefer to study independently, I have a self-paced review. It's linked to the bio of this channel. You can also preview and see what's all associated with it to see if that's what you need and what's beneficial for you. If you need to do any practice questions, my QBank, Options are linked in the bio of this channel. And you know, I always say reach out if you're looking to book one on one sessions as they are customized. All right, you guys, happy studying. Make sure you meet me back here. Bye, y'all.